Are you looking for a solution to build agents that perform automated tasks for you online? Discover Hugins, a free open source platform to create agents that can read the web, watch for events, and take actions automatically. It's a strong alternative to Zapier with the huge benefits of being customizable, free, and on your own server. Before discovering it through our platform overview, let's see how to start using it. You can follow the manual installation instructions from their GitHub repository, or use a platform like ours to take care of the installation, backup, updates, and maintenance for you. To install Hugin on our platform, go to ls.io and click on Login. Click on Deploy my first service. Search for Hugin. Click on Select. Choose between the different cloud providers, region and service plan based on your needs. Click on Next. Adjust your level of support. I will keep the free included one. And click on Create Service. When your instance is ready, you receive an email. Follow the click here to get the password link. Copy the password to your clipboard and follow the link. We arrive on that beautiful login page with a Nordic code. We can follow the login, enter your LSO admin email address and paste the password from your clipboard and then login. And now we are logged in, we have access to our instance and we have an explanation about that picture, which explains us that the god is Odin and Hugin and Moonin are the two ravens, which explain the name of the software. The installation comes with seven agents as templates. We can go and view them. Here it's the row list with all agents, but let's open view diagram to have a better visibility on how they are related to each other. Don't be afraid if it looks complicated, we will see together how it works. So we have two workflows. This one here, which is connecting XKCD source to Comic Formator and iTunes trailer source into Afternoon Digest. And another one, SF Weather Agent Rain Notifier into Morning Digest. Let's open the weather one to see how it works. So we start with the first agent. We have some raw information about when it's scheduled. So it's every day at 10 p.m. If it's working or not, the options required. But let's open Actions, Edit Agent. And from where we can customize it it's not what we want to do but we want some documentation about it to know how it works what is nice is every agent come with its own documentation so you can learn how to use it properly so this one what it explains is it has a location so it's where it's going to fetch the weather I have no idea what this location is, but we can double click and replace it to get the coordinate I can just search Tokyo on Google Maps it's at until before Z, because Z is the zoom. I copy and paste it instead of this. And API key. So for the API key, you have here the instruction. You must set up an API key for pirate weather. You can just follow the link, click sign up, and you will get your API key. And it comes with a free tier, so you can use it. I put my API key, hit save, and let's try to run it. So actions, run. To see what it did, now go to events. And you see SF Weather Agent created one minute ago. You can see it did something. Click on show to see the details. And you have the date. What is the temperature, the highest and lowest. And if it is rainy or not. And it seems it is. So it will be a bad day for me. Let's go back to our agents. So instead, agents view diagram. And we have seen SF Weather Agent Rain Notifier. This one, what it does is it will trigger when we have an event source SF Weather Agent. And based on this, it will parse the content to create a message based on the content of the previous API. And then it will call another event receiver, which is named Morning Digest. Let's open the detail of Rain Notifier. Go to Actions, Edit Agent, parsing the content that we got from the API to create a message from it. We will run it and what it will do, it will call Morning Digest that will send us an email. So let's open the Morning Digest, Actions and run it. We should see that it has been called. And I received that email, your Morning Digest, telling me that it will be rainy tomorrow and it's displaying the location. Before creating our own agent, let's have a quick look at the other one. So let's open the first agent. Its name is XKCD, which is based on this website here. And the type is a website agent, which means it is crawling that website here. So this is the website that they are crawling. If we look at the options, it is showing us what it is extracting. So the URL, it is getting it from comic image based on the CSS selector. 
title, it's using the same but the alt value of the image tag. And for hover text, it's using the title attribute. So let's do a quick dry run, dry run. And you can see that on that page, it's getting the URL of the image, the title, which it's get it from the alt tag and hover text from the title. Then what it does is it's calling comic formatter with that data and the comic formatter details, it's an event formatting agent. And what it does is it's taking the title, the URL, the hover text, and it will just format it into that HTML string. So if we use it in dry run, we will need to add some data because we are using it independently. We can use plus, enter title, and then test. Or if you prefer, you can just write it like this, title test, then URL HTTP test.com and hover text, text hover, and then dry run. And you can see it formatted this way. And then if we look at the agent, the diagram is doing the same. Once it have that data, it's also getting some iTunes data. And from that, it generate another email afternoon digest. So now let's see how we create our agent. So we won't create them from agent, but we will create a new scenario. So the first one, it was default scenario, but to keep things organized, we can create another scenario. Let's say we want to name it Wikipedia. So we'll fetch data from Wikipedia website. We can add a description to give details on what is the purpose of that scenario. Choose an icon, but sadly we can't preview it. So I have no idea what it will look like. Add some agents to it, but currently we didn't create them. So we just save our scenario and inside we will create a new agent because we want to fetch data from Wikipedia. The agent type we want is website agent. We'll name it scraper because we will grasp data from Wikipedia website. And good thing is on the right, when you choose different type of agents, you have all the information on how to use it. What is the format to create the correct liquid options here on the left. So either using their visual editor or a toggle view and writing it manually. And it even comes with pre-filled data. But first, let's say how often we want it to run. So do you want to schedule it every day, every end time, or you can just trigger it manually. It's what we will do with never. Then sources and receivers we won't have because we are at the top. Receivers, they will be, but it will be added automatically when we create the receiver. Let's say we want to crawl that page from Wikipedia, open source software. So we take the URL and inside our options in the URL, we just paste it. Then we need to define what data we want to extract. So it's using a CSS selector. What we can do to get it, we open the HTML inspector inspect and here we know where is the title of our page so we take that class name and inside the selector we'll say it's for title the css it will be dot because it's a class name and then the class name and the value we want is not alt because it's not the attribute we want the text value and on the right we have the documentation explaining us how to do it so it's string parentheses and dot so we replace this. Then we want to get rid of the URL and the hover text. Maybe we can rename it. So let's say it's content. The CSS for the content, what it will be. Maybe we can take that big block here. MW parser output. Of course, if it's a real project you have, you would be more detailed about what you pick. Dot and this class and the value we take the same, the content of it. Then dry run. We didn't add options, but instead of hard coding the URL, we could have made a dynamic URL to scrap different web pages from Wikipedia. But let's run it. And here we have our log, fetching that page, extracting HTML at, and it's telling us for that selector, it got open source software. So this is the title and then the content. And we have everything that got extracted. It's an array because it contains multiple content inside. But you have all the information inside. 
perfect. Let's say it's fine for us. We save it. We are still in our scenario. Let's create another agent. For the first one, I quickly chose a website agent, but you have tons of different agent, CSV agent. You can save file to Dropbox, send emails, save to FTP, and even publish on social media, for example, on Twitter. Where is it? Here, Twitter. Twilio to send SMS or even on Telegram, you have a lot of choice. Let's say we want to send an email, so take an email agent. We can name it Wikipedia email. We could schedule it daily, but we will keep never. Then the source, it will be coming from our scrapper. So we select it. And then again, because it is an email agent, on the right, we have the information on how it works and how to use it. So here it's explaining us we can add title and content. So let's open toggle view, it's easier to read. So we can add title. Oh, I don't even think we need to do this. We already have headline, so we can just add our data to here. So the liquid syntax is like this. Let's try it. So we have title, your notification title. So it should take the title from our web page, but because we are in dry run, we will type it manually. So title, and I think it was open source software. Let's try it so you can test it isolated. So it sends me a mail with the event. And in my mailbox, you have a notification, your notification, open source software. So you can see how you can connect different agents to create automated workflows. I show you some simple example, but of course read the documentation to either get inspiration on what you can create with Hugin or just to see how it works in depth. You have everything in the documentation. If we go back to our scenario, we have our two agents related to that scenario. We can see the diagram and because we connected the source for Wikipedia email to Scrapper, it automatically display how it works together. If we go back to the main agent section, you can see it's a bit messy because we have all the agents here. That's why we have scenarios and it's useful. But the good thing is you can reuse agents between different scenarios. Then the other thing you can see is events. So you can see all your events that run. Then you have credentials. For example, we used an API key for the weather. Instead of putting it only in the agent and don't have a clear overview of which one has an API key used, you can create all your credentials here and use them as variables within your different agents. If you are working in team, also don't forget to go to account, user management and invite all your team members within your Hugin instance. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed discovering Hugins with us. If you find our content useful, please hit the like button to make it more visible to other open source lovers. Don't forget to subscribe to not miss our upcoming platform overviews. And to continue discovering great free open source tools, it's this way. Here.